What's going on this week in Nerf? Welcome to This Week in Nerf, your source for first party, third party, and community Nerf news. I'm Adriana, and oh boy, a lot happened this week. This will be a long episode, so let's dive right in. Aaron Esser was sent a Rush 40, a Siege 50, and a Mach 100 from Hasbro. So, the pump action Siege 50 comes with 40 balls, even though it could hold 50. This seems to be a running theme through the, the whole hyper line, giving you just a little bit too few to fill it up all the way for some reason. But, they decided to, to splurge a little bit in other ways, like giving all these blasters paint on both sides. It's a, First time in a little while, I think. All the blasters do have screws, so they should be moddable. Uh, the Siege 50 is slam fire, which is awesome, and safety glasses are included, which I guess implies uh, eye danger. So we should always be wearing safety glasses anyway, but it's neat to see it actually included in the box. Uh, the literal first shot of this blaster just misfires. And he has multiple misfires and loading failures during the video. Uh, it also seems like this blaster has no hop-up uh, and still less less accuracy issues than the Mach 100 has. Uh, that one just has stray shots like crazy. Uh, he got a mask as well and the mask actually looks pretty decent. Way better than all the rival counterparts. And then Drac also got a blaster. He got a Rush 40 from Hasbro. 30 rounds instead of 40, just at, for some reason. Paint on both sides and screws, so at least there's that. I don't. I think I'd prefer to have my blaster full of ammo than have paint on both sides, but I guess you can't have everything. Uh, this blaster sometimes seems like you can chamber two balls, but you actually can't. The second one just falls right out, so it looks like inside uh, it just holds one at a time. The FPS was super consistently 120 FPS average, which was really surprising and impressive. However, the accuracy and the range is very, very poor. There's like a 15 to 20 foot variance in range and a 10 to 15 foot spread at 70 feet. Uh, Drac had to move closer to hit his tree, which doesn't happen that often. Uh, there are multiple feeding issues, probably because he tends to like push his blaster forward and the balls bounce out of the feed port. Uh, the hopper itself is the slide, so when you do that it promotes the balls bouncing around, so maybe it'll feed better if you pause before pushing the slide forward. Um, overall these blasters all seem a little bit finicky, but maybe we can still find some use out of them. We got a better look at the Fortnite 6SH six-shot revolver with the absurdly long barrel. Uh, the barrel looks like it's meant to be permanent after you install it, but you could preemptively file down that lock so you won't have that issue and you can take it off later. You still can't share it with other blasters because it doesn't have the end strike attachment, but at least you have the option of removing it if you are careful ahead of time. Now let's talk about this grip. That is a large grip for a Fortnite blaster. That is the arm hair of an adult male. And this grip is just massive, which is awesome. Uh, the blaster has paint on both sides. Hasbro is getting it, finally. Uh, we also have some images of internals. It seems really soon for that, but here we go. Uh, the internals confirm it's really just a hammer shot, but at least the, the grip scales are removable, so painting will be pretty darn easy. Uh, I think this blaster looks pretty great if you just want a goofy, long revolver. And there's also been a Fortnite leak. The Fortnite TNTina's Kaboom Bow. Uh, this leak was found on blowitoutofhere.com. Uh, in the game, this uh, bow resembles a compound bow, but it functions the same as the crossbow, apparently. Uh, if we had to guess, I think it would probably use the Zombie Strike arrows or be some kind of reskin of one of the Rebel bows. The projectile looks like uh, the arrows that came with the Dude Perfect bow or the Rebel Platinum, but it's possible that this will just be a single shot uh, dart bow just like the Rebel bows that we see broken at Goodwill all the time. Kids don't like it when their blasters lock, so they just break them. <laughs> 
Uh, it shows a price on the website of 1946 and a release date of August 1st. So we should know more about this pretty soon. The QWK Challenger has been teased for weeks now and we're finally getting a significant look at the Blaster because Blaster Club posted a full review this week. Uh, the Blaster isn't finalized yet, so none of this is 100% firm, but this is what we know so far. There's going to be two production versions. The standard will be about $150 and fire from 1 to 100, 100 to 130 FPS. Uh, use nylon gears, it won't have a bolt hold open, there's no scar barrel, um, upgradably with some optional extras. And then there's the pro version, which will run you four to $500, but that one gets 180 FPS, uses metal gears, there's a system to hold the bolt open, and it comes with a scar barrel. Now what's really cool about this blaster is it seems really accurate. The blaster in the video has no problem hitting small targets. It's got an injection molded shell and durable internals, a decent rate of fire. Uh, it's really compact, uh, it has an adjustable stock. It's field serviceable just by pulling two pins and that actually looks crazy easy. Uh, the realistic blowback breech door if you're into that kind of thing is actually pretty neat and it's less real steel looking than a lot of the other blasters that are coming out of China right now. Uh, I really appreciate the more sci-fi-ish feel to this one. And unexpectedly there is no delay between trigger pull and fire and it has semi or full auto modes. Uh, I believe it even has a burst fire which is just <laughs> insane. Uh, there are some cons too. It's got a proprietary mag due to it being mag and grip because if you use like talons it'd be way too thick to get the feed lips in there. Uh, there's also a system to make the bolt stay open if it sees the magnet in the slider there. It's, it's a whole thing. Um, lipo. Some people don't like lipo. Including me, I forget to charge them. <laughs> uh, it has a lot of recoil from that heavy uh, the, all the heavy moving parts, there's metal internals slamming around in there, so if you're trying to aim full auto, it could be a little bit uh, difficult at super long ranges. Um, and the stock may not be long enough if you're a gibbon, as the guy in the video says. <laughs> uh, and it'll probably be pretty heavy with uh, the big motor, the metal parts, it's, it's a big blaster. Overall, I'm really looking forward to what this AEG system is capable of. The idea of springer accuracy combined with flywheeler rate, rate of fire without worrying about playing in the gray area of my city's rules, pretty awesome. Rapid strikes. <laughs> Hasbro is furthering its tie-in with Roblox with a new Roblox game called Nerf Strike. The models and the maps look amazing. Uh, Piggy and You Like Dad Jokes have tried it out for us and they say the hit detection is pretty good and there's still things like dart drop in the game, which is something that I really loved about the Nerf FPS uh, mod by Isaac the Pooper. Um, <laughs> that game was really, really fun, but the maps here make it seem like kind of a big improvement, a lot better graphics. Uh, the open beta for the game is over. Uh, hopefully the full version comes out pretty soon. I'm excited to play it. Hasbro announced that the prices of toys and games will be rising. This comes down to the rising cost of resins used in injection molding, as well as the increasing freight costs. It seems like everything will be seeing price hikes across the board, and Hasbro saw a 14% increase in sales during the first quarter in consumer products, so now's as good a time as any for a price hike. Orange Modworks started shipping the SR200, but they may have jumped the gun. The print quality is very poor, and the first users to post theirs have broken their foregrips. Orange Modworks made a statement on their Facebook page that this is due to a batch of defective filament and changes made to the files by the production staff. Uh, they have been experimenting with better filaments as well as reverting to their normal print profiles. And the important part to, to hear here is all blasters that have already shipped will be replaced free of charge. 
Foam Fest is finally here this Saturday, May 15th, starting at noon BST. It'll be a fun day full of every facet of foam flinging fun. The guest list is huge, there are tons of items for grabs in the raffle, and everything is going to charity. Last year was great, and I expect this weekend to be no different. I hope I see you there. There's a new micro flywheel revolver that's been posted to Taobao. It seems really similar in function to the Viper or a Magpie, but this one is injection molded. It comes with a battery that looks like a fire hazard and 20 darts for $25 plus shipping. But right now, it's showing on sale for $13. You can add more wheels or revolver cylinders for just a few bucks, which kind of seems like a no-brainer. And for our main story, let's talk about Dart Zone. The Dart Zone Max has been revealed. Foam Fest posted this image to help advertise their raffle. The Dart Zone Max appears to be an Adventure Force Pro minus Adventure Force. The blaster is still a Nexus Pro. It's the same name, the same image, but this time with Primetime Toys branding and meters per second on the box. I think it's a pretty safe assumption that this blaster is finally the Pro Series coming to the UK, possibly Europe in general. Looking forward to hearing more confirmation about this, and I think we might have that on Saturday. But let's say I'm wrong. Well, international nerfers could still be in luck. Toyster is a toy store in Singapore that is currently taking pre-orders for a selection of Dart Zone blasters, including the Mark II. Coming to Singapore is pretty cool in itself, but this toy store also offers international shipping, so nerfers anywhere can finally purchase some of these. And now, for the super secret stuff. Coney Dog on YouTube posted a video with a slew of new blasters that were found on Walmart's internal product catalog. So let's look at some of these. The Tetra Shot is a belt-fed blaster, but every link has four darts on it. Uh, from the instructions, it's difficult to tell for sure how it functions, but I think it fires four darts at once, which is pretty awesome. The links are all individually attached as well, so you can use as many or as few as you want, or make 3D printed ones. Also awesome. And the blaster appears to have a human-sized grip, so go Busby. Uh, I'm a fan of ridiculous colors, and this is like a bag of jelly beans for $25. And continuing with Busby Blasters, because I forgot Adventure Force wasn't just Dart Zone, here's the Thundershot for $10. It's essentially a hammer shot, but this time with six darts and a handle that is nearly too small for actual toddlers. <laughs> and back to Dart Zone with the Monolith. It's a 40 round full auto ball blaster for only $35. Uh, the loading door is absolutely massive and I am in love with the stock. I am definitely getting one of these. But here's the big one. Conquest Pro. This is the next installment of the Adventure Force Pro line. It is a pump action half dart only blaster that claims to fire 150 feet per second and over 125 feet in range. This thing looks funky, but I kind of love it. Uh, the first question is, where's the mag? It's in the butt. <laughs> this blaster is a really interesting problem to solve. How do you change the direction of the darts. They're pointing down and they need to point sideways. But by some miracle, we have an image for that too. It looks like a really finicky system and I have some concerns about reliability, but I love seeing a fresh approach and a new idea. Uh, the listing does say that it works with all of the other Adventure Force Pro half dart mags, so it's possible that it could work with straight talons, but it might require some special modification to the dart grabber arm thing because talon feed lips are quite tight. Uh, overall, I am really looking forward to trying this one out for myself. Uh, I'm so, so curious to actually see this thing in action, especially for only 40 bucks. That's pretty good. 
And now it's time for the mod of the week. And this week it's the Doggo Squad Poodle Panic from Wretched Deterred. This blaster is a reimagining of the Rex Rampage and an homage to their dog, Luna. Uh, the Fortnite mag <laughs> as an ear is just so fitting. And I love, love, love the use of dog toys in a dog themed blaster. There's a Nerf ball for the poof on its head and a squeaky pig as stock padding. It's just, it's great. One of my favorite things about this hobby is people's ability to look at one thing and see something totally different. This was such a creative idea, and honestly, I'm not sure what's more cute. Your dog or that silly little pig? <laughs> great job. Thanks so much for sharing it. And that is all the news I have for this week. Thank you so much for watching. I know it's weird for me to be on this camera still. The other one overheated. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all the links to everything I talked about are down in the description along with the like button, subscribe button, and all the YouTube things. Um, while we only film this every other week now, you can still see me next weekend at Foam Fest Live. I have uh, my own little section. I'll be interviewing some people. I'll have my own little bit. Everything will be great. It'll be super fun to be in the chat too. I am very much looking forward to it. Uh, I'll see you then. Bye.